Hi everybody, I hope you're doing marvellously well. Today's video is a wonderful video. It is in celebration of Goffin and King, the Goffin and King Foundation. Nobody sponsored this video, we did it ourselves. It features some incredible musicians. I get to play a little bit as well, so hopefully I don't bring the site down too much. But it's a lot of fun to do, and you can download the multi-tracks down below, so check those out. Also, please go and check out the Goffin and King Foundation. Natural Woman, of course, is one of the greatest songs ever written. And uh, I really hope that we did it justice in this beautiful cover. So check it out. Oh, and also stick around to the end because Joe Carroll is giving us a mixed breakdown. He's taking the tracks that we recorded at Spitfire, the brand new Spitfire, and mixing them. So stay tuned for that as well. Looking out on the morning rain I used to feel so Uninspired, and when I knew I had to face another day, oh Lord, it made me feel so tired. Before the day I met you, life was so unkind. You're the key to my peace of mind. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Katie Marie and I'm super excited to show you the Lewitt Beat Kit, which is a drum mic set that consists of four microphones. We're gonna be recording up at one of my all time favorite places. This is Blue Rock Studios, which is in the heart of the Texas Hill Country on the outskirts of Austin. And I'm really looking forward to you guys hearing what these microphones sound like. On the drum kit today, we've got a combination of mics, but I'm gonna isolate all the Lewitt mics so that you can really hear what they sound like. Included in this set is the MTP440DM, which is a snare drum mic, a kick drum microphone, which is the DTP340REX. This has a switchable sound characteristic, and today we're gonna to be using the equals which is a balanced sound character optimized for recording bass heavy sources. And finally, two match pair overheads. Uh, these are the MTP440DM condenser mics. 
Alrighty, I think that's pretty much everything. So without further ado, let's dive into hearing some sounds and then afterwards I'll tell you guys what I think about these microphones. I've got to be honest, I've never used a Lewitt microphone before, so I had absolutely no idea what these mics were going to be like. I was very impressed with their construction when they arrived with me, and so I was curious to see how they would respond in the garrison room at Blue Rock, which is a room I know very well. I've recorded a lot of acoustic sensitive instruments there, and I was overall extremely impressed. Uh, the snare drum microphone is a lot darker than an SM57, which I appreciate because uh, I've now got another texture and a tone that I can use in my recordings. The kick drum mic had tons of low end, which I love, but I think my favourites were definitely the overheads. I was blown away by how much they picked up and how great they sounded just on their own. But I think all the microphones together, you're going to get a really awesome drum sound. And the other thing that was interesting was that these microphones have been specifically tailored for drums and they work well with each other. You know, the sound characteristic that they bring complements the other microphone perfectly. So they work really well as a set, probably better than any other drum mic set I've tried. So I think that about wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. And if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone. It's Joe Carroll. I'm glad to be with you guys today. So let's talk about the mix that I did for Natural Woman. As I've done a couple of these things for Warren recently, uh, where he's covered some old classics, uh, there, there's times where I heard them and I thought, I would love if, to change it up and do something different and, and made it more modern, you know, hit harder, uh, be wider, whatever the case may be. And there's other times where I, I heard it and it'd be like, it can't get any better than that. It shouldn't, you know, it's like, let, let's pay homage to the original and do a very similar thing. And this is one of them. It's Aretha Franklin, people. I mean, how do you get better than Aretha Franklin? So I decided to to just kind of, you know, let's make it kind of classic sounding. I mean, maybe freshen it up a touch, but in a lot of ways, let's pay homage to what, what she did. So number one, every track is going through Fuse Audio Labs uh, flywheel. That's a tape machine emulation. And I used Formula One, on every one of them, you'll see, I believe I used the exact same formulation, just like it was hitting a real machine, you know, where it was the same re reel of tape. Um, so that's going on. And then I've had fun kind of changing channel strips and doing different things, you know, going from SSL 4000 to SSL 9000. Uh, what I decided to do today, uh, not because that this was what the original record uh, had, but was to use uh, something old and warm and round and fat. So I chose uh, the Helios uh, emulation from Plug-In Alliance. So this is the Lindell 69, and you will see it's on every single channel. If there's, if there's a channel in the session, bass, guitar, piano, it doesn't matter, that is the primary treatment. If I needed just a little bit of extra treatment in a more modern way with, you know, more surgical things, I would bring in this SSL right here on top of that, you know, after the channel strip just to clean something up a little bit. But for the most part, everything is, is you know, stuff that would have been in the 60s, uh, tape and uh, Helios consoles, you know, came out in 1969. That was a lot of fun. So the other thing that I want to talk about is this song was very dynamic. When you hear the original, when it gets to the the chorus that you make me feel, it punches like like 
all of a sudden that 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 string section, that brass and stuff, that French horns, whatever I can't even remember what instruments were in the original, happens. That you make me feel the the melodic stuff that's going on behind her is very loud, very prominent. So what I wanted to do is pay homage to that, and the only way to do that, the only way is to get your hands on a fader and wham, you know, just just push it. So you'll see when it gets to the you make me feel like it just really I, I put a lot more volume into it I, and let's just listen for example and it looks like as the song went i even made those sections get a little louder just for intensity so i just kept ramping it up it, it, you know it looks like So right there, she she kind of goes into ad libbing and and that da da da, da that, that's kind of the m- melody that 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 center stage there while while she's kind of dropping out. So um, that has a lot to do with why I turned it up. But the thing is, and I've I've done some videos uh, on this subject in the past. To me, there's a lot of uh, mixing music that is is whether it's you know whether it's a mouse or whether it's our finger on a fader, you know, or even when we're recording, writing the short faders to tape or the preamp to tape, building dynamics into it, you know, is a, is a big part of creating emotion out of a song. So you're, you're hearing basically a super simple signal path, going to tape, pretending like we're going to tape, then going through a Helios console, and that's it. Other than that, our stereo bus. And, you know, I, one of my favorite pieces in the world is the SSL bus compressor, as I'm sure it's a lot of your, yours as, as well. But it is a modern sound, right? It's aggressive. I wanted this to be smooth. So to change it up, I went to a variable mu compressor, and this is the stereo variable mu from Manly. So it's I'm just tickling it, but it's it's just a, the way this thing, uh, the gooiness of it and the release of it is just very different, and I thought it fit this song very well. So anyway, that's just a couple of little tips and tricks from what I what I did to make this mix. So thanks for watching, guys.